Hello, my name is Runaf, and here at the ANU, I do a Bachelor of Science Psychology and a Bachelor of Finance. And today, we're going to be doing Spaghetti and Marshmallow Tower Building. So this video will be in three parts. First, I'm going to explain the concept behind the building. Then, after you've done the building yourself, I'll explain the math behind how it works and on a basic level, and then it later on in a more deep level. The first part of this will be for you yourselves to try and build the tallest structure you can out of just spaghettis and marshmallow. To do this, you'll need to find what you believe it to be the optimal and strongest structure to dispersing the force of the marshmallow amongst the spaghetti. After that, you can come back to this video and where I'll explain in both simply and in depth what the best structures would have been and why. Ten seconds later. If you just done the challenge, welcome back and congratulations to the winner. Now I'm going to explain the basic concept behind what would have been the best structure. Mathematically speaking, the best structure would have been something pyramidal. However, in practice, this is only effective when it's done en masse or there are multiple pyramid structures that are joined together. Therefore, what would have been best would have been to have a tower with either a square or rectangular base. So therefore, the best structure would have looked something kind of like this. First off, you would need to break this in. This cube based structure will allow for the forces to be distributed the best. However, to build upon this, we'll also need to include diagonal supports. So therefore, what we'll do is, we'll go on top, we'll continue with this structure, and we'll end up with basically a cube. So now I've finally put in all the diagonals and made a cube. The reason this structure works is the force that would be placed upon the subject is spread across not only the vertical supports and the horizontal supports, but also the diagonal supports, and therefore allows the whole structure to flex and take on more weight than it otherwise would be able to. For example, if you were to put the same amount of force on spaghetti, by itself, it would snap. From this structure, see how high you can build your tower. Keeping in mind that this type of structure will allow for the best amount of support when building. Now, we'll move on to part three. In part three, I'll be explaining the mathematics behind the optimal structures. But first, we need to remove all this. That's better. But before we can continue, I need my tools so I can explain to you the concepts. That's better. <laughs> Now we're ready, and I can demonstrate to you the math behind this experiment. Before we can go into the math, we need to first clarify some assumptions. One is that we're trying to build the optimal structure so that the forces are distributed equally amongst the spaghetti. And secondly, that structure needs to be non-trivial, meaning it cannot be just flat on the ground. So, first, we need to understand it in a one dimensional space. So in one dimension, this would look like a flat plane. And this angle here would be 180 degrees. Coming out of this fixed point, which would be the marshmallow, there would be one, two sets of forces. The force coming out of T1 would be equal to negative T1, the negative absolute value of T1, in the direction of x. Given that it's one dimension, there is only one direction that force can be exerted. And then we have T2. T2 would equal T2 absolute value in the direction of x. 
we can also tell that t1 minus t2 equals 0. We can also tell that t1 plus t2 equals 0. And from that, we can say that t1 equals t2. And therefore, we have a situation where it is the optimal structure as the force applied to both spaghetti strands is equal. Moving on, we're going to go to the second dimension. In two dimensions, we have both the x and the y axes. You'll notice that the axes may be inverted to what you're normally used to. However, this is the norm when we're talking about three-dimensional vectors, which we'll get onto in a second. In two dimensions, the structure that would be optimal looks kind of like a Y. From here, we need to figure out the angles. This angle here would be theta, theta 1, and theta 2. Then we can input where the force is be coming from. First, we have T1 on the base axis. then the second T and the third. When we add these forces together, they should equal zero. This would mean that they have the optimal structure where the force exerted through each arm is to be equal. Next, we can say that the absolute of all three of these are equal. First, we'll start with T1. T1 equals negative absolute value of T1 multiplied by sine theta in the direction of x minus the absolute value of T1 cos theta in the direction of y. T2 will be quite similar, as we can see over here in this diagram. So T2 will equal negative absolute value of T2 sine theta in the direction of x. But because T2 is on the opposite side, it will be plus the absolute value of T2 cos theta in the direction of y. Now we can go on to T. T only has one force direction. T will equal the absolute value of T in the direction of x. From this, we can try and figure out the angles. So first, we can say that theta 1 equals theta 2. And when you add all these together, what you end up with is negative 2 sine theta plus 1 equals 0. This is because the cos thetas cancel out. When you add all these forces together, considering that t plus t1 plus t2 equals 0, when we solve for theta, we are then left with theta equals pi on 6. Substituting that back into here, we can see that this over here angle would then equal 2 pi on 3. Now, we're going to go on to the third dimension. In three dimensions, we are, we are working on an axis, kind of like this. So we have an X, Y, and Z axis. And what we, the structure we are left with is kind of like 
in this. It may be hard to visualize as it's a two-dimensional drawing of a three-dimensional object. However, it'll look somewhat like that. First, we're gonna label all the forces. So here, there'll be four forces instead of three as there were in two dimensions. T, T1, T2, and T3. From here, we can say that these forces, when added together, will equal zero. This is so that we can say it's an optimal structure, as we did before. So therefore, T plus T1 plus T2 plus T3 equals zero. From here, we're going to skip a couple steps, because they're very similar to what we did in the two dimensions. So when we do that, what we end up with is something like this. T1 cos theta 1 sine alpha on 2 plus T2 cos theta 2 sine alpha on 2 minus t3 cos theta 3 equals 0. And when we solve for this, we get 2 sine alpha on 2 equals 1. And therefore, we get alpha on 2 equals pi on 6 or alpha on equals pi on 3. In summary, in one dimension, the object would look something like this where there are equal forces here and here. And this angle here would be 3 pi on 3. In two dimensions, the object would look something like this. And this angle here would be 2 pi on 3. And in three dimensions, the object would look something like this, and the angle here would equal pi on three. And so therefore, we can say that in order to create the optimal structure, you would end up with some kind of pyramid structure, uh, pyramid type structure in three dimensions, and this would the angle between this stick here and the other two would have to equal pi on three degrees, which would equal sixty degrees. So now that's the end of part three. I hope you had fun building your marshmallow tower, and congratulations to the winner.